Has your doctor told you you need to take Taxol and you weren't sure what that meant? Well, today we're going to talk about a very common chemotherapy drug called Taxol or Paclitaxol. Well, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. DuPont. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist, and I'm passionate about educating women on how to live healthier and longer lives. And I believe that begins with great health. Well, today we're going to continue our chemotherapy series, and we're going to talk about a very common drug called Taxol or Paclitaxol. Taxol is the trade name and Paclitaxol is the generic name of the drug. Same drug, two different names, Paclitaxol or Taxol. Well, Taxol is in a family of drugs called Taxanes. One of the most common ones, again, is Paclitaxol or Taxol. There's also Taxotere and some newer agents, but Taxotere and Taxol, probably the two most common Taxanes that are available in the United States. Well, Taxol was first discovered in the bark of the Western in this Pacific yew tree, also known as the Western yew tree. It's found in the Pacific Northwest in the US. Now, originally we had to, you know, destroy a lot of trees to be able to synthesize this drug. Well, now the drug is semi-synthetic and so we don't have to destroy a lot of trees, but it was originally discovered in the Pacific yew tree or also known as the Western yew tree. How Texile works is that it binds to microtubules. So when a cell divides, it has microtubules, there's two components, the alpha and beta, the taxol specifically attached to the beta subunits. These microtubules will help the cell divide. So normal cells divide very commonly. Cancer cells divide rapidly and that's why it's so fast growing. Well, what taxol does, it stops that cell division because it binds the microtubules and prevents them from continually to help the cell divide so it stabilizes it and that cell can no longer divide. Well, if the cell is not dividing as normally, then that cell will die, something called apoptosis or cell death. And so that's how Taxol works. So it works in the mitosis phase of the cell cycle. Now it's very commonly used in breast cancer and also many GYN cancers, specifically ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, and cervical cancer. So it's a very common drug. It is generic. It's been out a very long time and it's very well studied and highly effective. Now some of the things I want you to know about Taxol is that you will lose your hair. So that's one of the symptoms of having cancer is no hair. And so that's very distressing to a lot of women, but just keep in mind usually chemotherapy drugs will interact with cells that are fast growing like hair cells or GI cells or you know bone marrow cells and so those are some of the reasons why we have side effects from these chemotherapy agents but remember taxol will cause hair loss now carboplatinum that's usually used with taxol doesn't cause hair loss but the taxol does another thing i want you to know about the taxol is that it can cause hypersensitivity reactions so because the drug is not very soluble it has to be mixed in something called crimophore it's kind of like a, a castro type of substance. Well, it makes the Taxol soluble. Some people are allergic to that agent that's used to make it soluble or to dissolve. And so how we prevent the hypersensitivity reactions is you'll be given three things when you get your Taxol chemotherapy. One is the steroid. Your doctor may want you to take the steroid, you know, the night before and the morning of treatment or they may give you the steroids when you get to the infusion center. But a lot of times we will pre-medicate patients with steroids usually one or two days before treatment and then several days after. Another thing that we do, we'll give you an H1 blocker. So that's an antihistamine such as like Benadryl. That's one of the most common ones we use. Now remember Benadryl can be sedating. So if you're given that in the infusion center, you get drowsy all of a sudden. It's because of the Benadryl and it makes some people sleepy. Now there are some people, Benadryl makes them very hyper. Like my mom takes Benadryl, it makes her just doesn't make her sleepy, it makes her very hyper, but me, it knocks me out immediately. So just keep in mind that Benadryl is usually sedating for most people, but not all. So the H1 blocker is another way we prevent the hypersensitivity reaction. And the other thing that you're also given is the H2 blocker. And that also will help reduce these hypersensitivity reactions because scientists have researched that if these three medicines are given before Taxol or during the Taxol infusion, your risk of hypersensitivity reaction is less than 2%. So the H2 blocker is usually Pepsid that we use. You can use Tagamet, but usually most of us will use Pepsid or Famotidine. So H1 blocker, H2 blocker, and a steroid is what we use to prevent the hypersensitivity reactions. And mainly it's because of that crimophore because it's very hard to dissolve Taxol and some people are allergic to that crimophore. 
Other things that I want you to know about Texol is it can also cause myelosuppression, very similar to carboplatinum and Texol we talked about earlier. And what myelosuppression means is that your white blood count will be low, your platelets may be low, and you may also have a low hemoglobin. So it does affect those bone marrow cells, again, because those are usually growing rapidly. Texol can also cause nausea and vomiting, and so it does react, uh, affect the GI system. Um, so things in the GI system usually are also growing rapidly. So that's, those are some of the side effects that patients experience. Well, now we have a lot of great pretreatment, so people don't get as sick as they used to from a lot of our common chemotherapy agents. Another of the uh, GI side effects you can get is mucositis. You can get mouth sores, and that's very distressing for patients. But those are some of the side effects to uh, the Taxol chemotherapy. The other thing that I want you to know is Texol is usually given every 21 days or weekly. It depends on the dose and it depends on the cancer that you have, which route your physician will choose. But just keep in mind, it can be given in many different dose schedules. It can be given intravenously, can also be given intraperitoneally for patients with like ovarian cancer, primary peritoneal cancer, or fallopian tube cancer. So just remember, usually it's given intravenously, but can also be given intraperitoneally. Well, Texol is a very common drug and many people have taken it. It works for many different types of cancer. It's very safe. It is excreted by um, in your stool. It's metabolized by your liver. So it's one of those drugs that are hepatically metabolized or metabolized in your liver. And um, it's very effective. Now I did put together a chemotherapy tip sheet if you're interested in some of the things that patients have asked me over the years and how to be prepared for your first chemotherapy visit in the infusion center. So if you're interested, click the link below to get that tip. If you like this video, please share it, please subscribe, and please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and watch this video next.